السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته boys and girls ladies and gentlemen welcome أهلا وسهلا مرحبا to مدرسة TV show مدرسة TV show حج special I'm not going حج this year but I know a few people who are ما شاء الله تبارك الله may Allah accept the حج guys say Amin I know I'm sure some of you are going to حج or some of you probably watching this show from I'm joking guys welcome to the show welcome to the show once again we're live on YouTube and Facebook, and I would like to encourage all of you to share this feed, inshallah ta'ala, before we start the show today, guys. I've got an interesting story for you, inshallah. It doesn't look as nice as it wanted to look, but let me fix this. Let's try. That's the mic. <clears throat> guys, today, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to share a story of Ibrahim alayhi salam with you. We're going to continue from exactly from where we stopped yesterday. And today, inshallah ta'ala, we're learning the third part of story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then I'm going to take you back to Surah Al-Baqarah and we are going to recite a few more verses where Allah Azza wa talked to us about Al-Hajj. Before we do that, inshallah ta'ala, and oh, at the end I'm going to give each one of you a chance to call in and recite. Boys and girls, I'm going to give each one of you a chance to call in and recite with me. Get your mistakes corrected, get some feedback, and of course I'm going to give you a badge if you recite very well. Okay, I think the mic is touching my beard. There you go. All right, guys. So we're live on YouTube? Yes? Let's hit the share button underneath the video, guys. I want you to, inshallah ta'ala, share this at least with two, three, ten people. I'm going to share it very quickly, inshallah ta'ala. WhatsApp status. And on WhatsApp groups, inshallah. Share, share, share. I'm going to share it one more time on my Telegram. I don't upset people who are in the group saying, that. oh, why did you only share it on? Uh, why didn't you share it here? There we go. Share it with everyone. It takes two seconds to share, inshallah ta'ala, guys. And let us start. Well, we'll start with the story. As we are talking about Hajj and the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, boys and girls, let me take you to our Hajj class. Oh, yeah. Right. So we stopped yesterday in a story when we were learning that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he did something. What did he do, guys? What did Ibrahim alayhi salam, what did he do? Do you guys remember? Oh, he broke all the idols in the temple. And then he left the ark. Uh, sorry, uh, the hammer. Uh, he left it just beside the biggest one. And he asked people, why don't you ask him, since he is your God, ask him who broke all of this. And people said to him, لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا هَؤُلَاءِ يَنْتِقُونَ You know they don't speak. Ibrahim السلام, didn't have to say anything after that. Yes, because they answered, Ibrahim السلام, themselves, they said they don't speak. Exactly. This is exactly what Ibrahim السلام, is trying to tell them. Then Ibrahim السلام, said to them, how can you worship them? Yeah. How can you worship things that can neither speak or see? They can't even protect themselves. Have you all lost your mind? Uh, that's what he said. Okay. What happened next? Well, here's what happened. Here's what happened. They got really angry. And let's see what happened after they got angry. Guys, by the way, huh? anger is not something good. But these people got really angry. They were doing something huh? mindless anyway, but they got angry. Here we happen. The angry crowd wanted Ibrahim to be punished for destroying their idols. Hope you guys like the way I read the stories. Huh? Quite a unique way. So, oh, before so, they wanted revenge. You know, revenge? Huh? Okay. So your brother, by mistake, huh, as he passing in the house, huh, I don't know, and then he bumped into your shoulder. By mistake, he didn't pay attention. And you want to take revenge. So you go back and you say, <clears throat> you hit him with your shoulder. Revenge. Doesn't mean, yeah? why? Why? Can you not forgive? Huh? Uh, what's wrong? <laughs> Can you not forgive? No, revenge mood, huh? Okay. He did this, so I'm going to do this. She did that, so I'm going to do that. Revenge mode. What happened? So they decided to burn him alive. Was agreed by Nimrud, the king of Babylon and his priests. 
They said, this guy did something really bad and we should punish him. And they decided what? They decided to burn him alive. Okay. When you're burning some... Ah, okay. This is uh, quite painful to discuss, but okay. I'm trying to say something here. Look. When you're trying to uh, cook something, <laughs> yeah? You bring a handy. You know, you guys know what handy means. Okay. If you don't know, then please ask your mom. Uh, ask your grandmother. Inshallah, all of you know what handy is. You bring a handy. Huh? And then you cook, when you're cooking, hmm? whatever you want to cook, uh, probably chicken or something, you cook it inside the handi. Why do we do that? Why can't we just get rid of the handi and cook it like this? Guys, anyone? Huh? Why can't we do that? MashaAllah, tabarakallah, a lot of you active and live, live on YouTube, MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Amira Saliha Halima Abdullah Sadiq. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Very, very good. Ha. Huh. So, the reason we don't do that, guys, especially those of you young, you shouldn't, uh, uh, you don't, yeah, you don't, you don't <laughs> touch the fire like that, huh? The reason we do that, we put it inside the handi because we don't want whatever we're cooking to burn. You put it inside and then probably there's water or something. That's how we cook things. Anyway, this is not a cooking show. Now, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, huh? They didn't want <laughs> to cook him. They wanted to burn him because they were really angry. What did they do? Well, let's see what they did here. News traveled fast and people from all over the kingdom arrived to witness the execution. Ah, revenge ah, again, yeah? Very angry. Achha. But I was sad. What happened then? A huge pit was dug in the ground. Oh. So they're planning on something hmm? slightly scarier than what we thought. So there's a ground. And so what they want to do? A huge pit. Okay. They dig a massive hole inside the ground like this. Huh? Are you guys with me? And what happened then? And they filled it with wood. Wood. You know, a lot of wood. Wood, 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 wood. A lot of wood, 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 wood. Why? Revenge. Ah. What happened then? Someone is saying my mom cooks in handy. Mashallah. It was, ha, huh, it was the biggest fire anyone have ever seen. So what they did here, huh, they made this huh, like a big handy. You know what I mean? But there's no handy, by the way. And then they fire. Massive. Massive fire. Ooh, scary, guys, yeah? Scary. Now, the reason to dig the massive hole, because even if Ibrahim -Islam were to escape, he won't be able to escape. And they wanted to throw him right in the middle here. Ooh, what happened next? Ibrahim Islam had his hands and feet chained tightly together. Oh, come on. There we go. We were talking about escaping. <laughs> they had his hands and, and legs chained, like in chain. So he can't. Okay, now he can't really escape. Uh, you don't have to do all of that if you. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make sense. If you're going to, you know, tie someone's hand and legs, why do you do that? I mean, anyway. And he was put in a giant capital that, sorry, catapult, yeah, that would throw him in the fire. Okay, let me just explain this, yeah? I don't know who put this word here. <laughs> okay, have a look at this. So because the fire was so big, it was, it was really hot. Can you imagine, yeah? So even if the person, look at this person here. This person, if he comes near the fire here, what will happen to him? It will burn him. It's so hot because the fire is big. Uh, let me explain. You know, during winter, your parents keep telling you, don't, don't, don't go too close to the radiator. Why? You're feeling cold and there's heat. huh? If you go too close to the radiator, it will burn you. You shouldn't get too close. Yes? Okay, then you say, oh, no, no, I'm cold. Well, have some patience. Just move around a bit or something. Anyway. Now, the fire was so big that you can't even go close to it. Guys, the fire was so big that even the birds... Oh. <clears throat> Let me fix the ihram. <laughs> okay. Even a bird, if it were to fly over it like this, it wouldn't be able to do that. You guys with me? Even if the bird were to fly like that, over it, far away, huh? it can't. You guys with me? Okay. Now things are getting really scary. So what they did, rather than throwing him, 
they decided to bring up a machine. A machine that looked something like this. Maybe something like this. Huh. Has wheels. And of course has this surface. And then, yes, has this thing here. And you can put something here on top of the wood. And you bring it down. And probably in between there are some springs, something. Yeah. And then you bring it down. You bring it down. You pull it down. You pull it down. You pull it down. And then all of a sudden you release it. And then this thing goes, falls right in there. Huh? Quite bad, isn't it? Yeah, it's not fun. They're trying to do that with a person. Bad people. Anyway, they decided to do that. Because they can't go near the fire. Uh, yeah, they can't go near the fire. So they decided to bring up a machine and do this. Guys, what happened next? I'm feeling hot. I'm feeling hot, guys. Feeling really hot. Where is Bunny today, guys? Have you seen Bunny today? Oh, Bunny. Do you guys know? This? Oh, my God. Look at him with the haram. <laughs> MashaAllah. He's not going for Hajj, by the way, yeah? He's just dressing up, wearing a haram for the show. Just like me. Anyway, guys. Let's go to the next part of the story. Now, you guys see what's happening here, yeah? All of that because of revenge. Probably angry people. They got really angry. Yeah? Why did you break our idols? Got really angry. Anyway, here's what happened. At the moment, at that very moment, guys. You know the moment I'm talking about? I'm talking about this moment here. At this very moment, can you imagine how scary it would be? Uh, it would be really scary, isn't it? Oh, I'm feeling hot, guys. Anyway, I'm going to take a short break, come back, and we continue. Huh? Inshallah ta'ala, if you're feeling hot because of the massive fire we're talking about, open up the windows, come back after the break, Inshallah ta'ala, we will continue. Guys, a short break, we will be back. Stay with us. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>
Assalamu alaikum boys and girls, welcome back to Madrasa TV show. It's quite difficult to uh, have a mic on with the hram. Maybe if I were to put it on my uh, t-shirt. <laughs> okay, guys, welcome back to the show. Now we're discussing hmm, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And we know these people got really angry. Guys, let me remind you, next segment, inshallah ta'ala, we are going to recite Quran together. I would like you guys to call in and join us, inshallah ta'ala. Now, right at the moment when they were about to throw Ibrahim alayhi salam in a massive fire, here's what happened. Angel Jibra'il came to him and said, Ooh, Angel Jibra'il came to him and what did he say to him? Is there anything you wish for? Aha, guys, quite a difficult moment, isn't it? Imagine seeing all that fire. Hmm? So we go back here. Imagine seeing all that fire. And you guys know fire can be really dangerous. Huh? Seeing all that fire and know that you will be thrown in the fire and there is no way out because these people, they tied his hands and legs. You know, or Ibrahim Islam knew that there's no way out. Ha, ah, but there is a way out. There's always a way out. Right at that moment, an angel came into Ibrahim salam, and the angel, he asked Ibrahim salam, what did he say to him? He said to him, do you need help? You see, of course, huh? Of course, if I was there, I would, uh, it's scary, isn't it? Now I would say, oh, probably Allah sent this angel, so this angel is gonna help me, huh? Yeah, so we say sometimes you hear, oh, I want this, I want that, and then you get something and you say it's from Allah. Of course, everything is from Allah. Angel Jibra'il came to him, he's an angel, he's coming to a prophet. Now, of course, Huh? Of course, Allah sent that angel. But there Allah Azza wa Jalla was testing Ibrahim alayhi huh? salam. I'll give you guys an example. You have exams, you have exams, you have exams. Huh? And let's say you were meant to revise, but you completely forgot that you have exam. Completely. And next morning you are sitting in a hall and you have a test and you are really terrified because you did not prepare for this exam. You did not. And you know you're going to fail. You open the exam with the first question, the second question, don't look familiar. Third question, you don't even know which subject is it. <laughs> you did not prepare. You're going to be really scared, right? And I say, oh my God, I'm going to get bad marks. What my parents going to say? What am I going to do? Huh? Oh my God, this is right at that moment. Huh? Let's see. No one is looking and your friend on the next table there. He lifts his paper like this and shows you the answers. Ha, what are you gonna do? Your friend is, ah, you didn't ask him. You didn't tell him, can I, can I see? Huh? So you didn't ask for it, but he's showing you. Huh? Unintentionally, you look here, you look there, and you can see all the answers. And whoever, the vigilator, huh, is supposed to look after you, he's, he's busy, yeah? So you can blame him because he wasn't doing his job properly. You can say, oh, I didn't mean to look. But you can see all the answers. And let's say the answers are multiple choice. And you can see all the answers. From 1 to 10, you pick choice A. From 20 to 30, huh? the old choice. You can see the answers clearly. What would you do? What would you do? Would you? Ah, OK. Huh? So I'm saying, don't look. Salah is saying, Allah is watching. But you've seen the answers now. <laughs> and you know that friend I'm talking about, he's like the best one <laughs> in the class. So if you look at his paper and you can see all the answers, uh, definitely, huh? Uh, oh, that's going to bring a lot of good results for you. You see, a person might say, oh, you know what? That's a help from Allah. I can see all the answers, you know? Someone can say that, but not really, but yeah, okay. Someone might say, oh, I didn't mean to, but I just saw it. Mm, okay. But the truth is, guys, the truth is, if we really want help from Allah, do you think Allah need to, do you think Allah would get you to cheat, to get some help? Really? Do you think Allah will show you? Ha, huh, okay. Allah, the one who owns everything, do you think he will let you do something wrong so you can pass your exams? Hmm? I'm gonna give you guys a different example here. A lot of times people say, oh, I have exams and I can't fast. Yeah? 
I can't fast during the month of Ramadan because I have exams and I need to prepare. And if I, okay, tell me this guys, tell me this. Do you think Allah will ask you to do something impossible when he knows that you have exams? Do you think Allah would ask you to pray? Huh? If Allah knew you didn't have time? No. You see, it's about belief. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he believed. He believed in Allah. And he didn't just believe in Allah. He believed so strongly in Allah that he was willing to do anything and everything for the sake of Allah. We go back to the story here when the angel came and he asked Ibrahim, hmm? is there anything you wish for? You're a prophet. I'm an angel. I'm a messenger from Allah. What did Ibrahim say? He said, his only wish was for Allah to be pleased with him. Allahu Akbar. Ibrahim didn't think about himself, didn't think about the fire. He thought about who? About Allah. Now this is a huge thing, guys. This is not something small. This is something really, really huge. We call this Iman. Hmm? When you believe in Allah so much, yes, even in the most difficult situations, you do not think about the situation or yourself, you think about Allah. Yes? I'll give you guys an example. Yeah? Let's just say you're on a bike or you're coming back from a school, you're at home, something, and all of a sudden, huh, something happens to your mom. Yeah? She's not well. And maybe the ambulance comes, they go to the hospital, or something, something happens. Big thing, yeah? And you get really scared. Yes? Terrified. Do you believe that Allah is the one who's in control at that moment? Do you believe that? Yes? You see? All of a sudden we forget. Yes, we forget. Oh, this bad thing happened and this and that will happen, that's going to happen. And you start overthinking. What about Allah? Don't you think Allah is in control? Yes, He is. He is in control. So you got to remind yourself of that, yeah? So there Ibrahim alayhi salam, rather than, oh, rather than focusing on the fire or focusing on himself, he focused on Allah because he knew Allah controls everything and he knew if if there is anything that is happening in his life which seems very hard or difficult, it is only a test from Allah. He knew that it is only a test from Allah Azza wa Jal and he is here to please Allah, no one else. So he didn't even think about himself. He did not even think about himself. He thought about Allah Azza wa Jal. What happened next? He could have asked for anything but instead, instead of uh, begging for his life to be saved, he chose to ask Allah's blessing. The blessing of Allah. What happened next? What happened next? Allah Azza wa Jal is watching. Yes, He knows. Allah Azza wa Jal is Al Basir. He is watching and He knows everything happening. Allah would not allow the Prophet to be executed. Mm. He ordered the fire to be cold. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Now, something interesting happening, guys. Have a look at this. They threw him in the fire. But because Allah is the one who controls everything, Allah knows the fire is really hot and Allah is pleased with Ibrahim alayhi salam. What, did, what happened here? Allah ordered the fire to be cool for Ibrahim and the fire obeyed, burning only Ibrahim's chains. Woo! So when Ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown in the fire, the fire rather than burning him, it only burned the chains and it did not harm Ibrahim alayhi salam at all. Bardan wa salama. The fire became cold and peaceful. Ibrahim walked out of the fire completely unharmed. He came out like nothing happened to him. Oh, okay, guys, guys, <laughs> right at this moment, <laughs> some of you thinking, oh, stud, stud, <laughs> if I do, no, 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 no. Listen, listen to me, guys. <laughs> listen to me. We are talking about a prophet, Ibrahim alayhi salam. We are talking about a prophet. Huh? We are talking about a prophet who spoke to Allah. Yes? Ibrahim. Okay. Oh, sorry. Musa kalimullah. We are talking about the prophet who is chosen by Allah. Yeah? Khalilullah. We are talking about a prophet huh? who is spoken to angel. We are talking about, yes, Ibrahim alayhi salam to learn from this story. Huh? Okay. Well, you, the lesson that you can take from this story is that Fire burns, of course it burns, and it always burns, guys. Otherwise, there won't be food in the house. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Every time your mom goes to the kitchen, turn on the chula, fire, yeah? So you can cook. Why does fire, 
Why? How? But because Allah Azza wa wants the fire to burn. Yes? I'm going to give you guys an example. The reason you are alive because Allah Azza wa is allowing you to breathe. Is allowing you to breathe. Yes? Every moment Allah Azza wa is allowing you to breathe so you live. Right at that moment, when we are discussing the story of Ibrahim, at that moment, Allah did not want fire to burn Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah wanted to protect him. You see? So, it is with the will of Allah Azza wa Jal that fire did not harm Ibrahim alayhi salam. Boys and girls, that doesn't mean fire doesn't burn. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are smart enough to know this, yes? Now, what lessons can we take from this story? Why don't you guys drop me a comment in the box, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah? And, <clears throat> okay, let's see. Okay. That would be the end of the story, guys. So why don't you guys go ahead, inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to discuss the next part of this story with you tomorrow. We have one more part of this story, a very interesting one. Tune in tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. But we're going to start our Quran segment after the break, boys and girls. What lessons can we learn? Can we learn? Hmm. What lessons can we learn from this story, guys? Why don't you drop your comments in the, on YouTube? I'm going to come back after the break, read them, inshallah. And we are going to continue this story tomorrow. Okay? Remember, guys, everything happens in your life by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah is in control of everything. If we put our trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah Azza wa Jal will handle things, inshallah ta'ala, for us. If we put our complete trust in Allah. Remember, nothing can harm you. Nothing can benefit you. Without the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay, short break. We'll be back. Stay with us, boys and girls. I'll see you after short break. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>
السلام عليكم boys and girls back to Madrasa TV show once again we are going to continue inshallah ta'ala our segment now we are going to already in a Quran class boys and girls let's start let us start inshallah ta'ala today I am going to be teaching you inshallah ta'ala guys few verses from Surah Al-Baqarah verse number 201 202 and 203 guys let me recite these verses inshallah ta'ala and after this I'm going to get you guys to recite أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومنهم من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار أولئك لهم نصيب مما كسبوا والله سريع الحساب وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لمن اتقى واتقوا الله واعلموا أنكم إليه تحشرون. This is what we recited today. These verses are quite easy to recite. If you can't recite them, please don't hesitate. Call me in. We can recite them together. I can correct your mistakes and give you guys some feedback. Our first student is Muhammad Thabit. Assalamu alaikum. Waalaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Ustaz Hamza? Very well, Muhammad. How are you today? I am fine, alhamdulillah. Hayak Allah wa tafaddal. Oh, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min al-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ Next we have Ibrahim and Ali. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Who's calling? Rahima and Ali. Rahima, how are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Welcome to the show, Rahima. Rahima, can you recite these verses on your own? 
وجبات النوع آية 201 سورة البقرة ومنهم من يقول أوكي ومنهم من يقول لست أعود أعوذ بالله بسم الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومنهم من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا باب النار أولئك لهم نصيب مما كسبوا والله سريع الحساب ها واذكروا الله واذكروا الله في أيام معدودات فمن تعجل في يومين فلا فلا إث إث إثم عليهم ومن تأخرجنا فلا إثم عليه لمن التقى واتقوا واتقوا الله واعلموا أنكم إليه تحجرون some minor mistakes, Rahim. I would like you to recite this ayah one more time. وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ Slow. وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ فَمَنْ تَعْجَلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ جيم هي تعجل تعجل في يومين في في يوم في يومين فلا إثم عليه ومن تأخر فلا إثم عليه لمن اتقى لمن اتقى واتقوا الله واعلموا أنكم إليه تحشرون Barakallahu feeki, mashaAllah, tabarakallah. Mistake disappeared. Is Ali there? Assalamu alaikum. I'm Ali sir. Assalamu alaikum, ya Ali. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Ali, how are you today? I am good. Ali, are you ready? I don't know the surah. Let's read it together. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومنهم ومنهم من من يقول يقول ربنا ربنا آتنا آتنا في الدنيا في الدنيا في الدنيا في الدنيا حسنة 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 حزناته وفي الآخرة وفي وفي الآخرة حسناته حنات حسناته حنات حسناته حسناته حسنة حسنة وقينا وقينا عذاب النار عذاب عذاب النار عذاب النار may Allah bless you علي 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 ما شاء الله تبارك الله we go on to next caller السلام عليكم نزا عليكم 
السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. How are you, Ustaz Hamza? I'm very well, Nessa. How are you today? I am fine, Alhamdulillah. Ready? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim. Wa minhum man yaqul rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi al-akhirati hasanah. وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار أولئك لهم نصيب مما كسبوا والله سريع الحساب ما شاء الله تبارك الله بوس إن كلاس الشوب بريك نزه when we come back you can continue وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ A short break inshallah ta'ala and we'll be back. Stay with us boys and girls. We've got plenty of callers who want to recite. And if you want to recite, make sure you give us a call on the number below. There's a WhatsApp number and we also have a landline number inshallah ta'ala. And remember, right at the end we're going to pick the best reciter. It might be any one of you. See you guys after a short break. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>
Assalamu alaikum boys and girls, welcome back to Madrasa TV show once again. We will go to Naza inshaAllah ta'ala. After that we want to hear more and more and more reciters. Naza, you can continue inshaAllah. Okay inshaAllah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wazkurullaha fi ayyamin ma'dudat. فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنْ اتَّقَى وَتَقُوا اللَّهَ وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ Remember is what? Allah. May Allah bless you. Barakallahu fiki. Farzana, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Ustaz Hamza? Very well, and how are you? I am fine, alhamdulillah. Let's recite together. Is Isa and Azar reciting as well? It's only Isa. Can you get Isa and, you, and Isa and yourself to recite together? Because we've got a lot of callers and you want to get everyone a chance to recite. Okay. Yalla. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa minhum. Wa minhum. May May Yaqulu Yaqulu Rabbana Rabbana Atina Atina Fi dunya حسنة حسنة وفي ال وفي الآخرة آخرة حسنة حسنة وقينا عذابا عذابا نار نار بارك الله فيكما ما شاء الله تبارك الله سلفا باش فبوت الدم let's go to إكرام السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the show, Ikram. Are you ready? Yes. Go ahead. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَزَابَ النَّارِ أولئك لهم نصيب مما كسبوا والله سيع الحساب واذكر الله I can't see it on the screen You should be able to see it now 
وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَّعْدُودَاتٍ فَمَن تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَن وَمَن تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لمن لمن اتقى واتقوا الله واعلموا أنكم إليه تحشرون. ما شاء الله تبارك الله. May Allah bless you. Is عبد الواحد رسالتين. Yes. السلام عليكم يا عبد الواحد. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. How are you, Ustaz Hamza? Very well. How are you? I'm good, Alhamdulillah. Go ahead. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِّنْ مما كسبوا والله سريع الحساب واذكروا الله واذكروا الله في أيام معدودات فمن Allah, Allah. Annakum ilayhi tuhsharun. Next caller, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Welcome to the show, Ali. How are you today? Alhamdulillah. And how are you, Ustad Hamza and Arnab? I'm very well, and Arnab is very well. Are you ready? Yes, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أولئك لهم أولئك لهم نصيب نصيب مما مما كسبوا كسبوا والله والله سريع سمير حساب حساب بارك الله فيك علي we only gonna read one verse today يلا reward you next caller علي والثانية السلام عليكم والسلام ورحمة الله how are you, Ustad Hamza? Very well. How are you, Sanya? I'm good, alhamdulillah. How is Bunny? Bunny is very well. Sanya, can you recite these verses? Um, I don't think so. Let's read them together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa minhum... وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا 
ربنا ربنا آتنا آتنا في الدنيا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكلا وكلا عذاب النار عذاب النار أولئك لهم أولئك لهم نصيب نصيب مما كسبوا مما كسبوا والله سر والله سريع والله سريع حساب حساب واذكروا الله واذكروا الله في أيام في أيام معدودات معدودات فمن ها بارك الله فيك boys and girls this will be the end of today's segment Inshallah Ta'ala will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow, Inshallah, I'll be teaching you something very important about Arafah Day. So tune in tomorrow. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.